In any company, it's the branding department's job to make the business look good. Literally, that is their only job. So how do they get it wrong so often? Some of the biggest companies in the world have dropped major clangers that have put their business on the map for the wrong reasons. So here are my top 30 worst branding mistakes companies have ever made. Bic made a monumental mistake when they decided to bring out pens for females. You know, because they have so much trouble using the regular kind with their dainty little hands. Seriously, Bic, women and men for that matter tore the idea apart, leaving genius reviews like these on Amazon. My favorite one read, if you're going to make a pen for her, please refrain from calling it a ball pen. We're confused enough. <laughs> the pens are no longer being stocked. I wonder why. While I'm on the topic of outrageous sexism, take a look at these images. Can you see what's wrong? The one on the right is for Ikea's Saudi Arabian market, and so the women have been removed. The flat pack furniture giant had been heavily criticized over this, going against their brand identity and values, and they issued an apology for their mistake. And speaking of things that don't sound appetizing, how about this semen dip? Perfect for chips and sliced veggies, said no one ever. Apparently it's Turkish in origin, so I suggest they rebrand it if they want to sell the product to the rest of the world. We've all been there. A quiet night out has gotten out of hand, and before you know it, you're dancing on tables and calling your boss to tell them what you really think of them. You wake up the next morning asking yourself, what did I do last night? But I'm hoping that nobody watching has ever had to ask themselves this question. Jack Daniels, you should be ashamed of yourself. I'm not sure whether this is a bad translation, a bad bit of branding, or just evidence of a marketing team with grandma issues. Whatever it is, I think I'll just have peanut butter on my toast today, thanks. You've probably lived your whole life without considering that sunglasses could be naughty, right? Well, prepare to have your mind blown. Spy Sunglasses decided to get a little risque with their campaign, telling potential customers that their glasses are happy to sit on their face. Is it just me, or did it suddenly get a little hot in here? Schweppes fell foul of localization issues when they launched a promotional campaign in Italy and inadvertently started trying to sell toilet water. The Swiss company went with the name Illwater for the tonic water they were promoting. Sounds delicious, right? Wrong. In Italian, ill water actually means the toilet. Um, waiter, can I cancel my gin and tonic, please? Electrolux, a vacuum manufacturer, made a similar mistake, failing to recognize the double meaning of the word sucks. After creating the tagline, nothing sucks like an Electrolux, people were quick to point out that the word isn't only synonymous with vacuuming. Maybe it was on purpose though. What better way to get your brand some attention than with a controversial ad? Maybe that's what Pepsi was trying to do when they released this infamous ad last year. It got the world talking, but not in a good way. It was accused of using scenes uncomfortably similar to Black Lives Matter marches to sell their product and promote peace. But people were angry that they decided the best way to do this was to trivialize the protests and show a privileged young white model using a drink from a large conglomerate as a peace offering. Other people despised the way they tried to amalgamate several ideas like diversity in a somewhat disingenuous way to commercialize a sugary drink that isn't even healthy. Their tagline was, join the conversation, which is apt, as long as that conversation is about the health consequences of indulging on their product. Following the backlash, they pulled the ad and its star, Kendall Jenner, didn't speak about the incident for six months. This ad also makes me feel very uncomfortable, but in a totally different way. This dream therapist seems to have some controversial methods up his sleeves, including a promise to analyze your dreams. I'm sure it's just a design fault, but if you've ever worked with Dream Corp and can shed some light on Dr. Robert's techniques, I'd be very grateful. At least the previous ads told you what they're selling. What's the point in this one? What are they selling? Who answers when I call the number? Who are the creepy people on the billboard? So many questions. Can anybody solve this mystery? Let me know in the comments. So apparently somewhere in rural Missouri, there's a tourist attraction called Uranus that includes a variety of attractions, including a fudge factory. Given the funky name, they turned to some experimental marketing slogans that have surprisingly turned out to be huge successes. Here's my favorite, big fun in Uranus. Seems to be followed by Trail of Tears Memorial. All I can say is my road trip just took an exciting turn. 
Ladies and gents, if you ever have the opportunity to visit Bangkok, Thailand, there's one activity that you just can't miss out on, and that's cooking with poo and friends. Yep, cooking with poo. Go figure. The class is said to give a true taste of Thai culture, but I'm not sure I want to taste that if poo is on the ingredients list. There's a book with the same unappealing title as well, but the reviews seem to be overwhelmingly positive. Another item on the list of things I don't want to taste is anything from Dirty Bird Chicken. The Welsh fried chicken joint boss says that the logo is just a clever way of making the D and the B in the logo look like a rooster. There's another name for roosters, and I think the logo looks more like that, if you know what I'm saying. A dirty logo might be better than a dirty name, though. At least that's more subtle. This classy establishment invites you to come and eat. It's not every day that you get that kind of invitation, but their food hygiene levels concern me a little too much. Honestly, I'd rather eat a dirty bird or come and eat than at this place. What was this owner thinking when they settled on the most offensive letter combination of all time? No wonder there are so few customers. UK supermarket Sainsbury's made the error of all errors when a foolish employee accidentally hung a poster in a store which was only meant for the eyes of the employees. This poster was intended to encourage employees to get every customer to spend an extra 50p, which obviously didn't go down too well with shoppers. Little, another supermarket, made a genius marketing move when they took advantage of their competition's faux pas by releasing this ad with their very own 50p challenge. In another supermarket mistake, Tesco was left red-faced when they failed to notice the oversight that their branding team had made on their buttermilk packaging. What is it even supposed to be? Are they udders? Because that's not what I'm seeing. It isn't the first time Tesco has, uh, fudged up. Check out this price label. Maybe don't abbreviate the word assorted next time, guys. Dove skincare brand learned just how important context is when they released this ad in 2017. It showed a black model taking off her t-shirt to reveal a white woman underneath. People criticized the ad for depicting that Dove body wash was cleaning the black woman and turning her into the white woman, which is obviously hugely racist and insensitive. The black model in the ad actually came to Dove's defense, saying that the full TV ad made much more sense than the print ad, and that it wasn't offensive when in context. Still. Major fail, Dove. Major fail. More bizarre restaurant names now? Who on earth thought that Poopsies was a good name for a food and drink establishment? Do they have signature dishes like a Poopsie burger or a Poopsie club sandwich? Gosh, I hope not. This one is just as bad. I mean, I'm sure their hot pot is delicious, but does it actually contain a poo-poo? I really hope not. Not only does this place have a very disturbing name, but it also looks terrifying too. The weird characters on the banner, the narrow serving window, and the forest directly behind it all give a pretty creepy impression reserved for my nightmares. From weird restaurants to odd foods, I'm really out to ruin your appetite today. This Canadian milk brand made the same abbreviation mistake as Tesco did with their Welsh lady ass fudge that I mentioned earlier. How nobody was able to see that this might look weird during their branding meetings is beyond me. I would rather drink homo milk than eat only puke. I mean, these Chinese honeybean chips are probably delicious, but I really don't want to take the risk. Australia's Golden Gay Time ice creams are named after how much fun they are to eat, which is fine, but it's this ad that made people chuckle at the brand. I mean, they're right, it is hard to have a gay time on your own but surely someone should have spotted this double meaning before the ad ran. Logos dealing with children must be done with sensitivity and common sense, but the Catholic Church's Archdiocesan Youth Commission clearly missed that memo when they settled on this unbelievably bad logo. Considering the bad reputation that the Catholic Church has suffered over the years, this branding fail is particularly awful. Oops. Arlington Pediatric Center had a very similar fail with their own logo, which gave parents a huge cause for concern when taking their kids there. This logo error comes from a Swedish property management company called Locum. Why, oh why, did they have to change the O for a heart? The Swedish person designing this logo clearly didn't have this colloquial word in their vocabulary, so it seems like an innocent mistake. But who knows, it might simply have been a Freudian slip. 
The Facebook brand came under attack when they seemed to be using a natural disaster to promote a new feature. Facebook Spaces VR app, which was released last year and promised to enable users to go on, quote, magical tours. Which mystical location did Mark Zuckerberg choose to use to demo the product? Why Puerto Rico immediately after the hurricanes caused catastrophic flooding, of course. Don't you just love it when your local Chinese takeaway predicts the future for you? This classy establishment must be a buffet people overfeed themselves at, and they're calling them out on this behavior. Some things are worth getting fat for though, and spring rolls are definitely on that list. Believe it or not, there are parts of the world where the name Hitler doesn't mean anything, and so there are plenty of stores dotted around the globe with that name. Seriously, there are loads. In Pakistan, the brand Hitler Reloaded is a popular place to buy cutting edge fashion, and India has a similar store with a logo complete with an actual swastika. Perhaps most shocking is the store Hitler 2 in Gaza. Not content with using such an offensive name, the owner also chose to put knives in the hands of the mannequins to represent a recent spate of Palestinian knife attacks on Israelis. Bizarre. Now I know it's a difficult choice, but which one shocked you the most? Let me know in the comments section down below, and thanks for watching.